Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The topic that we want to share for today is about understanding ambiguity in requirements engineering. These are our group members, Nick Fikri ben Nick Ahmad Faris, Syai Datul Adila binti Kamis, Wan Nur Shahira binti Wan Ahmad Sayuti, and Mamado Boye Berry. Now, I want to talk a bit about the background. The definition of the ambiguity is doubtfulness that leads to many interpretation. It is actually a problem in the requirements engineering because some people might interpret the requirements different from another people. There are two empirical studies regarding the ambiguity, which the results are, one of it indicates that the ambiguity is hard to discover, while the other state that ambiguity cannot be solved by using formalization. Meanwhile, the combination of both results actually leads to different outcome, which the ambiguities can be detected by using tailored reading technique. Natural language is one of the representation that has been used to state the requirements that cannot be found by using the information technology. Ambiguity is actually one of its features. Even though it has many problems, but it's still been used to specify the requirements. And stakeholders often do not recognize the ambiguities. There are three dimensions in requirements engineering which are representation, specification, and agreement. And the initial phase in the requirement engineering process is the ambiguity. Now, I want to talk about the sources of ambiguity. And the first source is actually lack of completeness in specification. If the requirements is complete, then the ambiguity will be less because the ambiguity exists due to the incomplete requirement. The second source is actually lack of agreement. Different goals among people will cause them to interpret differently. That will make them to have com conflict among themselves. And the third source is representation. Natural language is actually weak because ambiguity can be found in two types of requirement which are formal and informal requirements for formal requirements it has less ambiguities rather than the informal requirement that has many ambiguities when the requirement engineering keeps going forward the ambiguity will be decreased and be and these are the impacts of the ambiguity the first is transform. It is actually misinterpretation of ambiguity will lead to incorrect information that will transform the original defect in informal requirement to another defect in the requirement model. The second impact is identify and remove. The customer expect that the problem has been removed as they already reported it, which it has been identified by the specifier. The third impact is self-resolve. Even though the customer does not been informed yet, but the problem has already been removed. And the fourth impact is forward. Duplication can occur because the same problem have been included in the requirement models. In this mini project, there are two main types of ambiguity that will be explored, which are linguistic ambiguity and software engineering ambiguity. For linguistic ambiguity, there are three types of ambiguity that will be explained, which are lexical ambiguity, Synthetic ambiguity and semantic ambiguity. In the academic literature and linguistic, actually there are few more types of ambiguity, but those are skipped in order to keep the conceptual differences clear since the omitted ones start to blur the distinction between different form different forms of ambiguity. 
let's start with lexical ambiguity or also known as polysemy it is a capacity for a sign such as word phrase or symbol to have several possible meanings leading to multiple possible interpretations for example in the sentence i like writing it is unclear whether or not the author is referring to the act of writing the verb or the result of writing the noun so how to overcome this kind of ambiguity the best way to deal with it with it is to use a word that does not have multiple meanings or to rephrase the sentence such that the word now has only one possible meaning for instance i like writing story the next linguistic ambiguity is syntactic ambiguity or also known as amphiboly it happens when a sentence may be interpreted mean may be interpreted in more than one way due to ambiguous sentence structure syntactic ambiguity appears not from the various meanings of a single word but from the relationship between the words and the clauses of a sentence and the sentence structure underlying the word let's consider the sentence the police shot the rioters with guns the, the sentence can be interpreted as the rioters with guns were shot by the police or the rioter was shot by police with guns the grammatical structure of the sentence is ambiguous and might be interpreted differently by different people next is semantic ambiguity it is the opposite of syntactic ambiguity instead of grammatical structure of the sentence that is ambiguous for some semantic ambiguity the individual words are interpreted differently for example every student thinks she is a genius there are multiple possible interpretation without enough context some might think that each student in the single set school's classroom think they are genius or the rest might assume every, a particular girl in the class thinks she is a genius or maybe some might assume every student in the class thinks their female teacher is a genius so without sufficient context the sentence and the word she is easily misinterpreted by everyone the next types of ambiguity is software engineering ambiguity software engineering ambiguities arise from the context that must be considered when considering requirements statement under the following domains the first one is requirement document application domain system domain and development domain for requirement document ambiguity occurs if a requirement allows multiple interpretations with respect to what is known about other requirements in the same document this is because it is very unlikely that a, rec that a requirement is self-contained there are requirements that are linked implicitly or explicitly, explicitly to other requirements thus the reader must trace the related requirements in order to understand a requirement correctly next application domain application domain ambiguity happens when a requirement allows several interpretations with respect to what is known about the application domain this kind of ambiguity is observable only to a person who is, who is an expert in the application domain the next one is system domain a system domain ambiguity occurs when a requirement allows several interpretations with respect to what is known about the system domain for example if the time expires before receipt of a disconnect indication the SPM request transport disconnection with a disconnect request. The timer is cancelled on receipt of a disconnect indication. The ambiguity arises from the system domain it, since it is ambiguous whether or not the second sentence is part of the if statement in the first sentence. Now is development domain. A development domain ambiguity happens if a requirement allows several interpretation with respect to what is known about the development domain 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Wana Shahira bin Tuan Ahmad Sinti with my treat numbers 1517892. So today I will share with you guys the technique to identify ambiguities. So there are many techniques to identify ambiguities but today I will only explain several of them. So firstly, let's check about checklist based reading. Checklist based reading is effective and frequently used for requirement document. So the previously identified ambiguity types can be mapped easily into a checklist. So the checklist provides support for spotting ambiguities, but there are several different of ambiguity. Sometimes it is incapable to detect which type of ambiguities in our uh, requirement. So the checklist only beneficial to single requirement only. Some of developer use another technique with this technique. Here we can see the table for the checklist. So this is the item which is a type of ambiguities and this is description. So description will map into which ambiguities. Let's move on to scenario based reading technique. This technique helps requirement engineer to detect defects in our re document requirement document. So reading is a fundamental technique for achieving quality software. For example, the operational scenario require the requirement engineer to create test cases as an abstraction of the requirement document. So if there is information that missing, then ambiguity in the requirement document detected. Next, let's proceed with lightweight semantic based technique. So we refer the article ontology based requirement analysis, lightweight semantic uh, processing approach by Kaya Seki on September 2005. They describe that ontology-based lightweight semantic dealing technique. Systematic reveal of inconsistency will be done using inference rule. Ambiguity is uncovered if requirement gets mapped to multiple elements of rudiments that are semantically unrelated and technique of mapping between relationships can help identify inconsistent and ambiguous requirement. So lightweight semantic is more focused in consistency which will lead to ambiguities. So here we can see that how the mapping between relationships can help to identify the inconsistency or ambiguity. Next technique is natural language processing based approach using parsing technique. Ambiguity always occur when requirement engineer express the requirements using natural language. So I didn't so I be, uh, so ambiguities identified in a natural language written uh, SRS document. So by using the NLP tools, you can be practicing thinking requirement and analyst find instances of potentially ambiguous sentences. And there are two step to this approach for identifying and measuring ambiguities in natural language SRS. So the first tool is for invoking command by knowledge base to provide measure to identify ambiguities. And tool number two is for identifying where is the ambiguity from the first tool. So there are three steps to identify ambiguities in a natural language written SRS document. So firstly, the tool parses the NLSRS, then follow with the extraction of classes, and then object involve an association from the parcel, and finally a diagrammatic representation is prepared. As, as we can see here, the diagram for parsing technique so first we parse the natural language SRS and then the extract of the classes, objects and association and the grammatic representation is prepared. 
That's all from me. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Mohamed Barry. Today I will be talking about methods of dealing with ambiguity. I recommend engineering. Uh, there are a lot of ambiguity that you came across, especially as a requirement engineer. So to deal with those uh, requirement uh, ambiguities, I'll be telling you how to deal with them today. So first, I put them into three categories, uh, how to deal with them into three categories. We have requirement elicitation, requirement documentation, and requirement validation. So first, we'll start with requirement elicitation. So as a software engineer, uh, there's uh, these steps below here you should consider. Context must be established explicitly and agreed by all stakeholders by a uh, requirement engineering uh, uh, meeting. Uh, to exercise, uh, the second is to exercise a restatement of what has been understood by the requirement engineer in her own words. So for example, if the requirement uh, has been already given to the requirement engineer so she should uh, she or he should uh, explain that in her own words so to see if she has understood what the uh, stakeholders uh, want so moving on we'll be talking about requirement documentation so into the requirement documentation uh, the software engineers would follow this step increase the precision of natural language for example, as a uh, requirement engineer is all about writing and getting um, getting information from the stakeholders, which is uh, a natural language. For example, uh, reduce uh, some acronyms, use natural languages so that you can facilitate the understanding. Uh, so the second step is appropriately contextualize the information to help resolve the ambiguities themselves. So here is to contextualize information, to put it into context. For example, if you're talking about uh, cars, you put into, uh, you, there you contextualize in right now, you talk about into a specific context, which is about cars. And if you're talking about software, uh, for example, if you're talking about medical app, you're talking about medicines and a little bit of IT. So set conventions, uh, so the third would be set conventions between the writer and the reader to how ambiguous phrases should be interpreted. So here, um, conventions is like agreement between the writer and the reader, the ones who is writing and the ones who are reading. The writers are mostly are the requirement engineer and the reader are the stakeholders and could be the other way around. So they should on, have a set of agreements in which that they can interpret the phrases that they wrote. So moving on, so this is the last one, and it's the requirement validation. And in the requirement validation, the requirement engineer should take these steps. Enforce precision by formalizing in, in the formal requirement. So uh, when you're writing a, a requirement specification, uh, requirement engineering, sometimes it's not formal, so you have to formalize it make it more formal so that it could be easier for, uh, to understand it. And then check for ambiguity patterns by using uh, reading techniques and language precision tools. There are, uh, there are uh, technical tools out there that you can use in order to spot out ambiguities uh, by patterns. So compare the interpretation of document by shareholders to put out ambiguities. So for example, if there are multiple uh, stakeholders so you compare the, the interpretation now. For example, you give them this requirement documentation and then you uh, uh, want them to interpret it. So you get each and every one of the interpretation. You try to compare and see if there is a, a mis, uh, misinformation or, or mis, uh, for, for example, there is no match into the interpretation, then there is a ambiguity, so you should then uh, know that how to handle that. Communicate an interpretation back to the uh, requirement author so that he or she can easily point out misinterpretation. So as I said for the first one, it's uh, related to the last one. So you have to point out the mistakes and, and then tell them, okay, this is interpretation is wrong. And then uh, you will help them easily to, uh, to uh, avoid that. So that's all from me. Thank you so much.